this staff was in one classroom using three computers for three months before we then moved to the temporary facility, the fire station where we were for you know three or four years. So I just want to say a big thank you to the community, to the folks who had the forethought and said, let's have a municipal building that will function in an emergency. And I think we're all reaping the dividends of that decision. And I, I want to thank everybody who supported this facility. Here, here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, second item on the agenda is uh, nominating uh, Bill Sheplick uh, to be our health officer. Do I have a motion? I move to nominate Bill Sheplick. Do we need to have the, his salary? Not necessarily. That's between us. Okay. I move to nominate Bill Sheplick as town health officer uh, for the foreseeable future. <laughs> <laughs> three year terms, yes. This thing, because uh, I just got appointed three years and uh, I'm happy to turn that You're right over. The job. <laughs> right over to Mr. Chef. Yeah, I would, I would suggest, Roger, that maybe after the motion is approved, if they're going to approve it, that you resign effective my appointment because you're going to have to send the nomination to the health department. Right. And, uh, when I'm appointed, uh, then you can design. At least this way, there's two official people. So, right. as uh, by statute, uh, Tom is our deputy health uh, officer. Um, so let's see how the vote goes. Um, <laughs> did I get a second? second. Okay. Uh, motion's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. no abstentions. Congratulations, Bill. <laughs> And, uh, and thank I, you. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Hereby uh, resign from the position and uh, let the uh, health department know at the state level, and yeah. we'll move forward with those uh, nomination. Can, I can okay, I got thank it. you. If you actually yeah. Yeah, nominated yeah. Uh, Tom to be the deputy, and yes, that's all. Set. He is already officially uh, the, uh, my my deputy now. Yours. Yeah. <laughs> a rich test. Okay, I think we're set with that. Uh, flooding updates and unmet and emerging needs. Uh, Tom, we'll start with you. Uh, nothing, nothing huge. It sounds like the the dehumidifiers we have are already ready to be distributed, and there's a lot more demands for that. I've got yeah. staff searching far and wide for what we can do, but. Um, I think I've exhausted every place that might rent them within a hundred miles. That's so I told them to start in Plattsburgh. Oh, good point. Maybe we can go from there. Okay. How many did you get? Just ten. That's all I could get. Okay. All right. Yeah, I've uh, gotten a few private ones uh, just uh, for my own purposes. I've uh, got two of them running in my house, um, which I'm willing to share once. Uh, we get a little drier. And regarding dehumidifiers specifically, we're going to work to continue to match folks up one by one via that form, the help request or volunteer form. So if you are volunteering, you can say, I have residential dehumidifiers to loan. And people can say, I'm looking for dehumidifiers. And we'll try to match those folks up one to one. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mark. Tom, are they commercial dehumidifiers? They're what they had. I don't. I don't know the the official <laughs> rating. Okay. They're they're the size of a of a big they're commercial. Yeah, yeah. So okay. they're they're commercial. Right. Because some of the little residential ones are not all would be not all that effective. The commercial ones, I know, yeah. are much yeah. more. Effective. I, I don't profess to know how long they should be in a in a house and how long we should go until we shift them around the community. And so in the short term, when can I get them out of that truck? Because we need that truck. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You want okay. to Who's going to distribute well, them? Well, that's. So I believe we've got a request for them. Yeah. Are people are going to come pick them up here? or uh... We haven't figured out delivery yet. They just, I think that was going to be part of our volunteer work. Okay. Immediately. But if you just need the truck, we can get that's them out of the truck. Put them in the lobby. Yeah. 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 If you need the truck, you can get the truck. 
All right. So that. they're here, and we got to figure out how to get them. Yeah. You could them. always put them in my truck, and I could do. I would be glad. There we go. All yeah, right. right. That will be so the, you know, on this, uh, the humidifier <laughs> delivery guy. <laughs> Come on, <D> <laughs> Uh, Gary, any updates from you? No, uh, everything went very well yesterday, not minimizing people that are impacted, but um, our we had uh, a few calls yesterday, but they're all minor stuff. People here is smoke detectors. There's still detectors going off in places that still have water. Um, you know, it's kind of like uh, not worrying about it, but worrying that something could happen and people ignore it. Mm -hmm. So there's it, that. Yeah. <laughs> It's a double-edged sword, but no, um, the roads are looking good. We assisted uh, getting a person across the Minsky Street Bridge and up here going through the water. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everything's going really well. Okay, and we've had no no injuries, no. We had no report. Yeah, none of our people are injured. We haven't had any real injuries. We had some, certainly some very close calls uh, from people that uh, have now changed their opinion about going across flowing water. Um, yeah. But at, at least for now. Mm -hmm. um, so no, yeah. everything's going very well. Well, great job. Thank you. Great job. Uh, Woody. Yeah. So um, yesterday, late yesterday afternoon, we built a temporary roadway or reinforced the roadway on Newsom Street to get mainly the North Duxbury residents out. Um, they were anxious and wanted to get to Watergate. Mm -hmm. um, so we built a temporary passage there. Um, we'll do more permanent work in the future. Um, did, uh, did part of that get washed out? I um, no. The, it's, like all washed the, out. it's all washed out on this side? Yeah. yeah. I haven't been down there yet. Is it passable yet? It's yeah. passable, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's passable, and I think um, I'm going to guess the north, the back side of the river is open now. Yeah, the back side of the river from the bridge all the way to just past Camel Sump mm -hmm. is open. There's flooding on the other side of that, mm -hmm. and it's flooding on the Duxbury side of the Lucy Street Bridge, uh, okay. going towards Main Street. And that's okay, so this is their only access for North Duxbury. This is the only access to get from here to Camel's Hump. Yep. Okay. Um, so we did that. We started actually sweeping in the downtown because we thought dust would be immediately. Yeah, after. I heard you got the uh, sweepers out this morning. Yes. Thank you. So that yes. was one of my questions here. The sweeper is good enough, um, or do do you do you do anything beyond sweeping? Do well, we scraped that? last night with the loaders. Two loaders worked to scrape the mud off. Okay. Um, some places are still a little too wet to operate. House basements being pumped into the street make it a little too wet, yeah, but, but um, you don't need fire hoses to muck out the roads in these spots. Okay. Um, yeah, we certainly, if, if we need to, we can um, get a truck and spray water. Um, a lot of times that creates more of an issue. We're talking high pressure, it's hard to moderate. The style of the nozzles that we use, we run the trucks at a certain pressure. Yep. So, okay. if, if if there's a, a need, we can, but we also don't have like penetrating nozzles. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Volunteers have been uh, pressure washing the uh, sidewalks on Randall Street, uh, but just in certain spots, and it's really slippery. I almost went down just like 15 minutes ago. Um, so, if we can. Get somebody to address that. I don't know. Yeah, it needs to need to dry a little more. We can sweep the sidewalk. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it does pressure wash pretty easily, and it just goes down with all the, everybody else yeah. is just entering their basements, and it all goes down the storm drains. Everything's washing. Chris, you had something there? Yeah, based on this poor forecast for the next conceivable days. I think Mother Nature probably assists with a lot of that. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's dangerous, right? It, I don't know whether the rain is going to push that silt off. No, I'm so. saying because when I came through town, there was some dust after they had. Yeah, it'll knock down the dust, but uh, we've got like a, an that. inch of silt on the sidewalk, which I'm means clear that one still. Find, the, find another home. Um, yeah, so roadways were doing all right. Uh, we started sweeping uh, some temporary repairs, Greg Hill, other places. Uh, we've got two crews, one from uh, Burlington Department of Public Works, 
pumping out basements right now. We've got another crew from the town of Stowe pumping out basements right now. Um, they've both started early this morning. We've had to shut off the water to several residents uh, as their basements have flooded and the water receives broken pipes in the basement. So several houses on Elm and Randall have had the water shut off. Uh, crews worked late into the night last night. Um, going to the wastewater pump station, we're still at very, very, very high levels. Um, we've got a massive pump from Burlington DPW working, assisted by the town of Stowe down there as well. Um, we're holding steady. It appears that most of the work, uh, kind of echoing what Bill said, most of the work that we did after Tropical Storm Irene, um, the flood proofing of the main street, um, the pump station, all the dry pit submersible pumps, everything worked. It's still working. Yeah, they closed the flood doors. There was very little water inside the pump station. Wow. The pumps kept operating throughout the whole thing. Problem with the pumps kept operating is there was, there was no room in the lagoons to hold. Right. Yeah, so they they overflowed. No, we're close. We're close. So you're still right there. We're, still, we're holding right there. Okay. And, um, well, uh, Burlington was offered up another huge pump, but they may have now have a rupture of the sewer line under Wilmsky River that they may. And so we think we just actually are headed to Ben and Jerry's. They have a large diameter pump that we can borrow. Um, so hopefully we'll make ground wastewater wise. Um, and I think that's probably works in a nutshell. Uh, and just real quick, um, I had to. Bill and I traded some texts this morning. Um, he doesn't have any concerns about the safety of bridges. Yeah, I looked under the armory. I'm not a bridge expert. I'll throw that out there before I tell you. But I looked under the armory drive bridge and the twin bridges down here. I don't see anything need for concern. And I believe Alec looked under the armory or have to drive bridge. Mm -hmm. So, um, and how about the one up on Stowe Street, uh, that old, older bridge that was about yeah. to get replaced? You wouldn't want to look under it in good times or bad times. So. <laughs> yeah. I just want to know if it's safe to drive over. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's safe. It's, it's, it's not any water. less safe yeah. than yeah. Uh, right. it is. Yeah. But yeah. the water, water it did not hit that. Yeah. Well, I was charging down uh, oh. the old uh, head of the wood there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. really ocean. Yeah, fingers crossed that one's slated for 2025, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. No worse than it was. Uh, yeah. Alyssa. Do we have any more road closures in town right now? No. Mm -hmm. well, the, the road closed sign is up at the ice cream road, but you can drive around it. Um, Little River is open? Yep. Everything's open. Um, temporary at Wilmington Street. Yeah. Um, and it looked like to me the ice center didn't get hit. But I don't know if anybody has. Not that that matters, but it looked like you just got close. Mm -hmm. good. Yeah, it's good. But and then across the river in Duxbury, uh, the road between the Winooski River Bridge and Duxbury is still closed. It was last I knew when I early this morning I could hear the loader and grader working over there. So um, yeah. and actually the material that we used to open up this this side of the Winooski Street Bridge was provided by Duxbury. Their need to get their people out. Right. So, yeah. And just right. a, just a quick note: it's more of an EFUD thing. But we're all playing for the same team. Um, the, the push for the EFUD employees to get them all cross trained in water and sewer, and and this is a great example because we've only got two guys at the sewer plant. They've got to be there twenty four seven during an event like this. They've got to sleep, so having the water guys also getting those licenses and experiences is, is really helpful because water is far less impacted. Yeah, Chris, you had something? Yeah, I spoke to somebody at an um, emergency management and called me about the water level at my place. Because it's been somewhat of a gauge as to what happens down here from that end. Yeah. Um, and one of the big concerns that I guess was being discussed in the emergency management that there was no reaction. Uh, from whoever it is that controls the dams, the three local dams. There was no mitigation efforts prior to this. Uh, there was. Yeah, was Our dam was back. closed. Yeah. Well, I was told that by this person that that basically you haven't learned a thing from the last I read that, you know. Our dam was closed. Um, I don't know exactly when it might have been when it hits 417. 
Yeah, I forget if that was Monday night was or yeah. Tuesday. Well, and lowered, I think, was there. Yeah, I think, what do you think? He's saying it's like, should they have dropped the water table no, down? In in prior to that. That's why the right fill is pretty near. Mm -hmm. That's uh, cool. uh, they, and they, he said that that was a huge concern that nothing was done prior to the storm, similar to the last time. And that's what I thought they would learn. So it took some time to get through to people, understandably, yesterday. But I talked to the dam safety, the dam safety engineers, and they've got a protocol for lowering Wrightsville and the Waterbury Reservoir and others. But it also is dependent on the Winooski. Right. So with the Winooski so high, I think that impacted their ability to lower things. So right. they also said that they thought. Um, now it appears both reservoirs will be fine. And I'm sure over time they're going to draw them down once the Winooski gets lower. But they they gave me a lot of reassurance yesterday that um, they haven't been asleep with the switch at all. It's just a challenging time. OK. Any further updates from the town, Mike? Oh, uh, Woody, yes. on Winooski Street, yes. down by the end, yes. is there damage? Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's What's the prognosis? Um, it's like there's several or, uh, five, six feet deep right. through there. Much of the pavement has been lifted. Uh, the storm drain seems intact. Um, so it's it's a rebuilding of the road. It actually seems a little worse than when it was Irene. I'm not sure if that vehicle that was there has kind of redirected the flow of water there. It, there's a it, it, yeah, there. I think what happened was that because that vehicle was up from the rocks, that created that yeah. uh, roach uh, uh, under, under cut. Yeah. Oh. And now the vehicle's out in the softball field. Oh, okay. So yes, a little bit of it. Okay. Yeah. All we right. probably, uh, probably I know Tom has discussed a potential if we do rebuild a potential cure, you know, by doing like almost like it being like a sluice way. Yeah. Know, yeah. I think that's a really good suggestion. But you not, know. My, not my idea. That was Bill's idea. Oh, okay. Uh, I heard it from you, though. Okay. I heard it from him. So, uh, one other piece I just want to add. Um, I really want to thank Lisa at the roundabout, who in a lot of ways yeah. served as public information officer. But it was frustrating that to me that, you know, you call the news, you call the radio, you get in contact with Lisa. Um, but the biggest lesson learned that doesn't take a year to implement, I just want to do now is I want to start a town Facebook page and just do it. Mm -hmm. It would have been extraordinarily helpful the last few days for us to post our own updates about what roads are closed. Yeah, that would have been shared throughout the throughout the, the web. Mm -hmm. So I just want to get that started. And I don't think it's going to take forever to do it. I'm sure, it's a little more creating a government page and a personal, but with the select board permission, I just want to do it. Yeah. I'm, uh, I make a mo I make a motion to approve the uh, oh, board of very select board. Uh, it's a Facebook Facebook page. It's a second. Okay, uh, we we have a motion to we have a motion to uh, create a town Facebook page. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Any abstentions? You have permission to create a town Facebook page. Thanks. All right, uh, that's it from the town. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> one, other, one other quick thing, our, uh, our middle school rec program is at Brookside for today. Uh, we're not sure for how long, and, and maybe they'll be there for the duration of the summer. Um, so thanks. That's the one that used to be at the Methodist Church? It used to be at the Wesley Church. Wesley Church. So thanks to the school and thanks to the folks there. Um, I also just want to know, I'm not sure we're going to use it, but Monica Callan at the Grange has offered us uh, something like an 80% discount if we want to use her space. Um, so that's also a great offer that we might take her up on. So just want to thank the school and thank Monica. Very good. You're here. Okay. Um, Lisa the... has a hand up. And then Sorry. one last thing. Uh, last thing, we got a request about lights on Randall Street in particular. I'm assuming that will no longer be a need, but just to raise it. And then also, it doesn't need to be right now, but as a select board member, I want to know who on earth I was supposed to call because I literally was like, it's 10 30. <laughs> um, in terms of if needs like that come up, I don't know who to direct them to. And again, I think it's probably moot at this point since you all are pumping out, but. Um, just wanted to raise lights as a potential and assume that's not moving forward. And then after this, just make sure supplement the street lights. So I think the street lights were not bright enough. So it was a question about like rental. Not bright right enough all the way down Main Street. Sure, I live on Main <laughs> Street too. So. But they were doing work outside. 
Yeah, yeah we, okay. we cut things off uh, about well, the 15 minutes. We're talking about uh, the newer lights, the LED lights. There's my understanding is there's switches in them. I was talking to Green Mountain Power, and they said that you, the ones that are dimmer, you can actually brighten them up. Uh, I don't so know. Cool the request has been made several months ago. Um, on GMP's <laughs> list. GMP's can, list. Can you run the lights on Randall Street? No, the ones on South Main. But okay. um, along with other lighting issues that have been in the work since COVID. But was your, was your question, did the lights go out at some point in the night? Were they just yeah, too Yeah, my question was, do we anticipate, say, Union Street needing rental lights as a useful service the municipality potentially could help provide tonight? Question. And then if so. second, if said type of request emerged in the future, I just wanted to know the appropriate ways to route said request. So the first thing that comes to mind for me is, does the town have a light tower? No, the times we've needed to utilize it in the last five or six years, I've borrowed one from Dave McDonald. Yeah. That's going to be noisy. Yes. Yeah, right, because you're it all generated. Runs on a generator. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Easy. Generator. So that's nice. real noisy. Yeah. Are we in that much of a need for it? I wonder. Do we have to work 24 7 on this? No, I think probably not. I think it's healthy. Like I said, just wanted to raise it on things that. Okay. Have residents requested that? Well, apparently one did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It seems like among all the requests that that may be one that we might not be able to serve. Sorry. Um, I think Lisa, Lisa Scagliotti. Oh. Sorry, uh, I'll be quick. Um, I think the idea of a Facebook page is a good idea. Um, that would have been helpful to be able to share that. It's it's an easy way. I can attest that there's a lot of people in the community that use it. Um, some municipalities use Twitter, and I don't see. I, I don't do Twitter with the roundabout. I don't feel like a lot of our readers are on Twitter, so I, I just I don't have that much bandwidth. One thing yeah. I'd like to mention, though, for the people who are not on Facebook. Um, to try to reach them. Um, and I can send you a few of these, Tom, too. Duxbury started a thing about a year ago where they just have a mass email that goes out, sort of like the way the, the school does it. You know, like you, you as a parent in school, you are on a swift reach um, uh, email server kind of thing, and, and they can send out emails when, you know, schools are closed or there's an announcement or whatever. Um, and they've started building a list like that in Duxbury. And I think they've got a few hundred people on it. Maybe they might be up to about 300 now. They don't aim to get everyone, um, but I think they they definitely try to reach people who aren't, you know, more on social media and stuff. So mm -hmm. something like that is a pretty easy thing to do, to just do like a, a kind of a free MailChimp account, and you can send out the same message that you've got on a on Facebook. Um, Facebook, you could do more often, I suppose, but there may, you might get some, you know, concern from especially older residents who aren't on on Facebook, um, they might say, you know, what about me? I don't want to get left behind. And that might be a way to kind of have those things work together. So you kind of reach as many people as, as possible. So just a suggestion. It's a great suggestion between what was created yesterday and the few hundred people already who have signed up, plus our MailChimp, we could we could figure out something, I think. Yeah. 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 Have a uh, subscribe, just yeah, yeah, we may want to create a, a new email address for it. It's really easy. Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to show you a couple of the the Duxbury emails. I, mean, I use Mailchimp for what I do, and um, I only recently had to start paying for it, and it was when I exceeded two thousand people. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of a lot of wiggle room before you get there. That it's just a free account, um, and you could do a lot with it. So we do have a master. Yeah. We do have a master list for Main Street for the Main Street project, app and covers from crossroads to. The ice center basically okay. email addresses for businesses and homeowners who chose to. All right, that'd be good. Yeah, the fire department uses a Google group for all of our people, and you can you can moderate what access people have, and whether it's just read or whether they can respond, right. um, which works great for us. Okay. And right now in the resource doc, folks can already subscribe to Mark Cornelio and Revitalizing Waterbury's business updates. There's a subscribe for that and can subscribe to get all of the select board agendas automatically, which Karen already sends out just so you will get an email each time an agenda is posted, but also sounds like more to come as well. All right, uh, unless there's other uh, updates from the town, let's move on to volunteer planning and, uh, and effort, starting with short-term volunteer needs. 
I guess, Roger, I'm thinking maybe we defer back to you. The general statement, I would say, just so that the community knows, and because it's incredible to see, so we talked about yesterday with help from Liz Schlegel and others that we launched this form. We have 420 responses to that already. That's both needs and folks offering help. But just to say, like, what an incredible outpouring of um, mm -hmm. community members, both within and beyond Waterbury. So I would just say like the bottom line is the bulk of this agenda item is us figuring out what next steps are in terms of safely and effectively using that. Um, Woody already received, for example, anyone who had a need for pumping that list went to Woody this morning for the folks who are coming in to help. Um, there's been a couple of small one-off requests for things that we've been able to work on, but we need to kind of figure out a sustainable system for managing and engaging with this incredibly long list for now, um, we did just send a note last night that basically said, thanks for signing up. We have your contact info. We will be in touch when we have needs, but hang tight for now. So it's, again, to say this kind of conversation is about um, what those next steps look like. I guess, Roger, I also want to offer you gave some kind of three steps hierarchy that maybe makes sense to review now, but also want to use the expertise of Gary and others in terms of what we feel like is the right approach for doing this. Well, um, I just uh, went up and down Randall Street this morning, finding out where people were at. Uh, and uh, Scott Mackey uh, came up with a, a three-step assessment of uh, readiness. Um, and the uh, first stage is we have still have a couple of basements that have not been pumped out at all. Uh, people are away, rental properties or whatever. Uh, so they uh, are, there are others on the street that have pumped out theirs and they're now helping some of the other people. Um, but that, that would be first stage. Second stage is you pumped out, but then there's a certain amount of materials that were left in the basement that need to get taken out of there with ideally with some volunteer help. Uh, and part of that was uh, dependent on having a dumpster to deposit these materials in. I just talked to Bob Butler, and he said that uh, the arrival of the Casella dumpsters is imminent. Uh, he's going to put two on Randall Street. And Bob, if you're um, on the, uh, he said he was going to join via Zoom. Maybe he's got further updates on where the others are going to go and when they're going to get there. Bob, are you there? Maybe not yet. Okay. Well, we know that, uh, you know, maybe even as of now, there are two uh, dumpsters on Randall Street that are can be used for putting whatever it's got in the garden. I, <laughs> no. I'm a Randall Street guy. No. Um, <laughs> no. yeah, I just remind people not to forget about like South Main Street, where not many houses were. Right. And that yeah. shelter. And, and Batchelder and Hunting Place, Route two. two. So and, uh, lower uh, Union Street. Yeah. yeah. So should we be communicating like that? Like, who are you? I will just say all of those. So of the, like I said, twenty-four um, addresses for pumping that went to Woody. That included not only Randall but Batchelder, South Main Street, um, Huntington Union. So at least some of those needs needs are being communicated to us, and at least for pumping have gone out. Um, I don't know on dumpsters. I guess that's mm -hmm. who should follow Bob. 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 I think Bob's our dumpster guy. Okay. Uh, well, I can do it last time. Yeah. Okay. He, he knows the dumpsters. Perfect. He's been in touch with Priscilla. Okay. Just at the area. Yeah. Right. Like that's what you want. Yeah. That's what I, I'll reach out to Bob and talk about those specific okay. areas. Yeah. And uh, probably in a in a day or two, uh, just when when he's done some of the basic work on the roads, Woody might have a dump truck available. You'd hate to have to transfer the material twice, but mm -hmm. that's always an option. And we're two specifically requested. So that's one to just make sure Bob knows. And then uh, the third stage is people that have everything cleared out, but still have uh, some uh, mud uh, remaining at the, in the floor of their basement and would be ready for the uh, mud sucker. Mud sucker. Uh, if, if and when it's available. And I've got a couple of priority houses on Randall Street that are ready to go. Um, so I don't know how uh, Woody's prioritizing that, but uh, maybe Gary, do you have an idea? No, I don't have an idea. I just want for people that are listening, uh, I, I received a bunch of phone calls at the fire station yesterday 
people saying, hey, we're told that the fire department's coming around pumping out basements. Our pumps are not designed for that. Right. So uh, we're not. <laughs> no, the fire department was not pumping out, but we do have, as I understand, two crews uh, that are doing that, and then plus a bunch of volunteers doing it. Uh, there's uh, a guy from uh, Green Mountain Garlic uh, that has a big uh, commercial uh, irrigation pump that does the job pretty quickly. Yeah, I think right. the most people are gone. We'll have everything pumped out today. Is yeah, what I expect There's to another. Uh, my son-in-law was went and bought two pumps, hmm. uh, and he's he was on Randall Street. Yeah, he, well, he was helping us with water last night. Yeah, so. same son yeah. It would also be great to follow up just to make sure we're covering Route Two and what Union and mm -hmm. others as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, was this Kyle or the other Jacob? Jacob's Jacob's the the yeah. Mike, how are we going to deal with hazardous materials? Because probably in some of the basements there are hazardous materials mixed in with you know their household stuff. <laughs> I don't know if uh, again this would be interesting to know if we can put hazardous materials into the dumpsters uh, or whether well, we need to have like a hazardous. Well, I say no, right? Uh, yeah. I, I would. If, if we can get a separate dumpster and locate it someplace besides Randall Street or the other streets mm -hmm. and let people know that there is a hazardous materials dumpster that they can bring stuff to and maybe uh, our local uh, recycling hazmat uh, trash guy would be the person to talk to. Yeah. Um, he might be able to... John Malter. John Malter. Right. Yeah, it's not just... Items though, there's a report of oil on the ground on Union Street. Yeah, how much you can do about that? But, yeah, uh, but other materials, if you don't provide people with the option, it will go into dumpsters. Right. So okay. Um, I can't. Can see. We, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can we? Uh, so we want to get back to the top, and I'll get some as soon as we go there. We'll get. And we'll uh, get an update on the website about that as soon as we can. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I remember the last time that everyone was placing, there was a, a, a tower of paint, crazy pan bottles, and all the hazardous chemicals. Yeah, that's just hard. So uh, everyone was aware that there was a dedicated space to put that last time. But I guess for the time being, uh, do not put any hazardous materials uh, like paint uh, in the dumpster. That's just hard. Mm -hmm. And pesticides. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so. If the uh, dumpsters will be in place today, uh, do we think it's time to start mobilizing the volunteers? Well, I guess that's the question. There's two kind of short-term and long-term. So again, we've identified, we have, we're gonna say 400, because I'm now up to 435 responses while we've been talking. Mm -hmm. um, volunteers, again, some from Waterbury, some from surrounding and even distant communities. Um, the question is next steps in terms of like triage and management. So yes, we can send an email to folks. Um, the question then becomes, where are they meeting? How are they being directed, um, prioritized and shuffled out? Um, just being really candid, I'm gonna have to go back to work at some point. So that is not a full-time position I can be doing. Um, so just to say, um, Long term, I think there's a question around if the select board is comfortable meeting to create like a volunteer subcommittee. Liz has offered to serve on it, but if folks are comfortable, some of those 400 volunteers have offered to help with logistics. So I would say the first step would be recruiting two to three to help with the ongoing volunteer management task, which is not insignificant. Yeah. Um, but then knowing that we'll need to have a system for where folks are meeting. Again, we can send an email after this meeting saying, please arrive at location X at time Y, but then we need to have a protocol for when they arrive, how they're going to dispatch and things yeah. like that. Uh, Mike? If we, if we don't have a sufficient number of volunteers, I know there's that state website, vermont.gov slash volunteers. How do we tap into that? 
I think more, we have. I think you have yeah, more than we need. We have 400 on that. Well, I know, but, you, but it's going to start waning at some point when people have to go back to work and, you know. I would say for the imminent future, we have 400 right. folks to start with, and I want to focus on managing them. And then right. I think that's an important question for a future meeting. Right. So I think what our. Oh, I'm sorry. Is she had her hand up. I'm just going to add in. Yeah. yeah. Your, uh, your name again. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. There we go. Yeah. Water, 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 water. I would say I don't think it's a lack of volunteers that we have. My big concern is if you put out the call and say, come volunteer to help, you are going to get 100 people. And I think we want to be very cautious about how many people are invited to help. Um, Rotary has stepped up to feed them. If you're prepared to do so, we are not prepared to feed 400 people this afternoon. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So, uh, sorry, uh, my take on this would be that we should. Uh, Create a management structure, uh, maybe directly after this meeting. Yeah. Uh, Liz, if you'd be willing to participate in that, uh, I'll participate. Ariel, if you're willing to join, um, and anybody else in this room, and I guess online, but probably don't need more than five people mm -hmm. to figure out how to organize this. And then we'll have a statement about how many people we need today, and then further on down the line. We'll okay. see and work it out. I guess should we now? The other we had on here was just safety and protocol in terms of recognizing Gary is sitting here. Do we have candidly? We're walking that as has been raised before, chaos through line between what we as a municipality are encouraging and and just making sure we're we're being reasonable and appropriate and safe with volunteers and putting them in situations we feel comfortable with as a facilitator. So in terms of um. I don't want to say lines in the sand, but types of things that we need to be aware. Of. Again, maybe that's part of this follow up. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the biggest issue right now is going to be people uh, getting hurt, cuts mainly, and the fact that the water is dirty. And <coughs> people need to make sure that they get cleaned off as soon as they can because that stuff will absorb into the skin and you're going to get sick. Yeah. Um, but it, minor injuries is what we saw after I read and just people cleaning out and getting cuts and stuff like that um, and not overdoing it. It's, you know, today's weather temperature seems very nice compared to what it was after I read. It was extremely hot and muggy. Mm -hmm. um, so not overdoing it, moderation. The ambulance does have two crews running. So doesn't mean that they don't have two calls at the same time. But at least right now, they're running two crews on duty. So, okay. Um, Robert, yeah. For, for those who are going to uh, coordinate, I think it would be wise, if at all possible, to create a simple form that people sign that they're coming to the town of Longbury. Um, you know, VLCT is the town's insurer. Uh, there's limited coverage for volunteers. Um, and it's really to protect the town's liability more than anything. It's it's not going to be workers' compensation or things like that for the volunteers, but it would be helpful if you had a list uh, and that if, if uh, necessary, you could produce that for passive, then it, it could help just alleviate other legal issues that you don't want to get. Good point. Thanks, Paul. Uh, can we generate a waiver? Yeah, we've got that. All right, um, if we're done with uh, safety and protocols, uh, long-term volunteer management and coordination, um, I guess we can cover that in our meeting afterwards. Uh, don't have to take everybody's time on that right now, uh, but we will. Okay, Al? Uh, yeah, the town owns the Rusty Parker Park now. And if you just step back a second and think, and, and Irene, the park got flooded with three feet of water, so it was not usable for anything. Um, but right now, now, the park, basically the bandstand and gazebo are high and dry. Uh, the canopy over the uh, bandstand area is a place that could be set up for distribution of cooking food and whatnot. There's water there from uh, the tap from the... Uh, uh, village and there's also restrooms that are there. Uh, there's a hose there so people can come over and wash wash up. There's electrical outlets there so people can uh, connect to the outlets to charge their cell phones and, and etc. So you've got an asset that uh, was not really usable right after Irene that you do have right now. 
that as long as that can be opened up and manned by volunteers to make sure uh, it doesn't get misused, uh, that facility can be, it's within walking distance of your downtown area for anybody who needs help. People who need to wash off, for example, as a hose there, people can just rinse, rinse themselves off or their clothes or boots or whatever uh, down there. And, and uh, But just think about the fact that you've got an asset that's right there mm -hmm. uh, that's can be used for something other than concerts in yeah. the park and, and other activities. Okay, thanks, Al. Is the uh, rest, public restroom uh, open now? Uh, no, the restrooms are only open during events, and that's just so that there's a responsible person looking over the restrooms to make sure it doesn't get trashed. But this this is an event, and if if you've got some responsible people who volunteer to basically look over the facilities while it's open, uh, we can treat it just like an event. And uh, yes, the Rotary stocks the restrooms. We make sure the restrooms are clean for the events. And uh, oh, well, we plan to do that. And she'll be in touch with you about the timing on this. Thanks. All right, any other hands up? No. Uh, I did a specific thing about restrooms. What are we doing for volunteers downtown? We're not even, we've got six volunteers at our house. They're not using our restroom. Are we setting up four of us downtown? Has that been addressed? Uh, we have not addressed that yet. Okay. Uh, we did bring in restrooms. We, I was not part of it. Uh, for Irene. Uh, I remember. There was a part of that, yeah. uh, at least one on Randall Street that stayed there for a long time. It did. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a great opportunity. <laughs> Sure. Um, but um, thank parking lot, like the back of the bank or a co pay parking lot, maybe that well, we our put it on 51 South Main Street. Park. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be yeah. good. In fact, there was one there in uh, fairly recently. There might still be one there. Uh, <laughs> that's a place for you to put it, yeah. right? Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's try to get yeah. portal out on the uh, 51 South Main. And uh, any other suggestions in terms of location? Yeah, uh, was... So the cider, the owners of the Cider House restaurant out on Route 2 have um, offered their space as a staging area for volunteers to meet. So we can ask them if we want to put one there. For all those houses on Route 2, which all need pumping, all need the same set of services as Yeah, be. okay. So Cider House. Yeah, I was just going to say in the interim, um, Sonia Garrett at PGB Salon just posted on this morning from 44 and that folks can use the bathroom at the salon and that it's mm -hmm. open. So that's okay. 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 Which is right next to 51 South Main. Yeah. Next house down. Well, that, well that's helpful. Uh, that was John Walter. Babashan and True Value will take paint and stain. There's a National recycling. Need program to bring it down there. There. We can organize and bring it down there. Anything else hazardous? John is already working sure. on okay. place to get rid of that. The normal transfer stations underwater. Which is was underwater. Um, Rodney's. I know the one in Richmond was underwater. Okay, so he'll get back to me pretty quick. I think. Okay, but he said get it all in one spot, and and we'll go from there. All right. So people. Can... Put it out in front of their house for the time being. Yeah. Um, so we can designate an area. All right. Um, now is the public uh, session. Uh, anyone that has something that's not on the agenda uh, can bring it up now. Chris. Uh, future impacts of future storms based on continually growing impervious areas. Um, my neighbors got their yard clean for nothing. Uh, the amount of trash that's running down the river during these storms is of great concern to me. Uh, whether or not zoning can somehow regulate the amount of stuff that's put in floodplain areas, uh, future floodplain areas, the floodplain areas that are already built in now, it's kind of difficult to deal with that and regulate it. Um, but I can tell you um, videos that I saw yesterday um, were quite disturbing with those huge campers sucked under the bridges and you know not in this town but in different towns and all that stuff ends up in 
the big toilet called Lake Champlain uh, that's growing worse and worse year after year from contamination. Uh, just a couple of concerns. Um, future problems. Every time, and I was telling Bill earlier, we were talking about it. It may not sound like much to you guys, but I'm completely aware of it because of my business, the amount of force that I'm cutting down daily to put in impervious, impervious areas, uh, mm -hmm. replacing those forests with rooftops and chimneys. And uh, it's just all contributing to the growing uh, catastrophes as time goes on, more water volumes coming into areas like this here. Next uh, yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah. Water very dodged the bullet in this time. I mean, not completely, but mm -hmm. you know, I guess my bigger concern is to is, again, not if it happens again, but when it happens. Again. It's it's a, it's a difficult topic to deal with. Um, how do you stop construction? How do you stop development? How do you mitigate these problems? Uh, for the future, uh, it's something to think about. Yeah, well, we will have new zoning regs uh, for uh, the phase one area, which is this downtown area by uh, 1st of March, as I understand it. Um, and then we'll be moving on to the rest of town. So, um, and something you can consider. There are, on the issue of, of trash, there are a number of towns where we could look at them for models of this, like what was interested that have various ordinances related to generally public health and safety that involve trash mm -hmm. um, and above and beyond trash oftentimes things like junk vehicles right mm -hmm. um, it's oftentimes an easier thing to regulate in the city quite frankly mm -hmm. um, than, a, than a town with a lot of rural areas um, but it's something that that the select board could take up okay. right. yes. uh, let's I think you're Chris I want to respond to it. just I was thinking about it too. One of the things that the governor said in his press conference, in his first press conference, was that they had known this was coming for a couple of days, right? I assume because of the um weather modeling with Deep Thunder, the IBM program that we signed on to after I read, but we didn't know. And that is a gap, and it is going to need to be raised and pushed with the administration in that. We could have put out a call for volunteers for people to clean out their backyards, right? I know, you know, I have a lot of like, um, you know, injuries and stuff. Like, I would never have been able to clean up my backyard if my, you know, nephew hadn't been here to help and carry all the water, right? All the stuff that would have gone. If we did. And that is the kind of pre work that we're going to have to get used to. And we do need the um, state to notify us if they see something coming. You know, we they had a couple days, we didn't, and I, I do because that is the kind of thing people will absolutely help with, right? Can I make one other yeah. point? Too? Sure. So I'll give you a little story on what happened to me here recently. Uh, Mr. Bill Shell was aware of it. Uh, a couple of winters ago during the pandemic, I had some erosion to one of my hay fields. Uh, I took a machine on the other side of the road, or on the other side of the road on my property and removed uh, a corner of the field that was next to the brook mm -hmm. that was shoving the water. It wasn't there originally. It used to be several feet away, yeah. but over time had built towards, anyway. Yeah. Somebody turned me into the state um, when the guy from agency and after resources showed up and uh, wanted to know why I did that. I brought him over and showed him the reasons why. And uh, he said to me, well, why don't you just get a permit, Chris? I said, I didn't get into the brook. He said, well, you filled in a floodplain. I said, I didn't fill in a floodplain. The material was already there. You don't fill in a floodplain with material that's already there. I just took it in one spot, put it in another spot. He said, well, you covered up a wetland. I said, it was all Japanese knotweed. And I said, if you research it, Japanese knotweed completely destroys wetlands. His next thing was, well, you're supposed to let those rivers run natural. Well, again, I've got photos on my phone right now from yesterday that people sent me where their complete driveways were just destroyed. Hundreds of cubic yards of material 
of man-made impervious area gets put into the brooks. There's nothing natural about that, you know, and that fills in all these deep holes in the brooks and streams. That's why we don't have any fish anymore in, in the, you know, it's it's a, you know, maintenance of people's roads <laughs> is a huge issue. Uh, how do you address that? Um, you know, in the two developments that I created, I had covenants in there that specifically address those issues. I had spoken to the zoning and uh, planning commission years ago about some of these subdivisions being required to have covenants in them mm -hmm. for road maintenance to reduce the amount of erosion, reduce the amount of storm damage. Uh, it didn't go anywhere, but it's just another contributing factor to, again, the problems that were being faced when these storms come through. Yeah, good point. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Can I ask a question yes. from the public? Please do. Um, there's an ask about um, cleaning supplies, and I think we talked about it yesterday that there was a lot of donations of those things, but I don't know if we ever right. revisited that conversation. Whether uh, it is part of the volunteer organization after yeah. this. What? Okay. And, and, and Tom, you, make a decision. you were gonna uh, talk about getting bleach uh, kits, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, okay. so coming out soon. Interesting. So yeah, we'll have uh, information on this uh, up on the website within two hours. Okay, that's great. Okay. All right. Um, determine next meeting date and ongoing meeting schedule. Uh, Alyssa, you mentioned that you may have work obligations uh, coming up. Uh, once things start as, as many of us do, sometimes yeah. we need to work for a living. But um, uh, I guess I would just say I I think that's actually the least important. My question is, do we still see value in a daily stand up meeting at nine a.m. or another time um, through the end of this week or otherwise? Um, and how far are we scheduling out? I also wanted to say the select board was going to have a vicious dog hearing, if anyone recalls, at seven p.m. and that is not happening tonight. Oh, tomorrow. Sorry, tomorrow. Yeah, um, yeah Thursday. Back my days on Thursday, but just saying out loud that that is canceled. Um, our next regularly scheduled select board meeting is Monday, the 17th. Is that the correct date? Yeah. Um, at, was 6 p.m. an early one, so we are maintaining that. Um, but do we see value to a daily meeting? Um, I guess I would say, regardless of my own personal attendance, I think I can make it. Do we think through this week that is useful for the next two days to have an 8 or 9 a.m. meeting? I suggest that we'll learn a lot from the cleanup today and the volunteers, and then maybe one more daily meeting to parse through that could be useful. Smart. Yeah. I'm wondering if we could do it at noontime as opposed to 9 a.m., because I think we may have volunteers to deal with uh, in the morning. And I also have to get back to a uh, work thing. Um, and so uh, if if it works for everybody else, uh, I would suggest that we meet at noon tomorrow and then uh, determine any further needs before the next meeting. My only question is, do we need to meet prior to volunteers? Or maybe we can, maybe that doesn't need to be a select board meeting. Okay. I'm just thinking some folks may need to touch base the in the early morning. Yeah, like volunteer yeah. coordinators can be before. Yeah. So select board special slash emergency meeting tomorrow uh -huh. at noon, regular meeting. Yeah. Monday and we'll okay. assess tomorrow. Any yeah, person. if if we need to, we could meet again on Friday. But I'm feeling that we may be a lot further along by this time tomorrow, and uh, we may not have to meet on Friday. Are you doing your e fund meeting tonight? <laughs> it's still scheduled. I'm going to talk to Skip about that momentarily. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, There's a hand. Oh, Lisa. Lisa. I'm sorry, I, I didn't uh, jump in fast enough. I've got one question from a reader um, that I didn't know the answer to because I haven't been down there with the road closed. Maybe Woody knows this. Um, a question was about the condition of the dog park. Um, not so much whether there's mud in it, but did it get washed? Did it get washed away? I guess was the question that I had. And I said, oh, no, I'll see if I can find out. Mm -hmm. Has anyone been down there? Um, I would suggest if you have contact for um, anybody at WADA, the Water Bay Area Trails Alliance, they were down there um, because their trailer got washed up and so they had to get that and check the trail. So they would have that information because they were down there most likely. So it would be a good contact. Okay, I do have a contact for them. That, that's a good suggestion. Thank you. Um, and I had one other thing to just 
share wearing my green up hat um, and my past memories of, of this from Irene, we're not anywhere near this stage, I think, but hearing that volunteer list is pretty encouraging. I remember all the hundreds of volunteers that we had over months, but one of the things that comes up after the, the people and the homes are helped is the garbage cleanup. Um, we had, we did green up for about, I don't know, four or five months. Um, me and McKee will remember all the volunteers that came and we found trash and there were, we had one tire cleanup where we cleaned up uh, about 2000 tires over on route two, which is when Chris uh, Vianz's remark about, um, you know, material floating down the, the river, we had junkyards just get inundated and their stuff got moved, you know, a 10th of a mile down. And we had dozens of volunteers picking up hundreds and hundreds of tires. Um, I haven't done anything yet to go out to look and see what until the water's down to see how much garbage is out there. Um, but after Irene, we worked with property owners all along. Route two was probably the worst. We had dumpsters in Forest Field. We had um, Green Mountain Power owns that that whole area over by the footbridge. I don't know if the footbridge survived or not. Mm -hmm. um, but there were lots of propane tanks um, and and all that sort of material. Um, but that was that was definitely like down the road. That was the next spring after after Irene was in August. This was like the following spring where we did probably from April till July. We did that sort of cleanup. Um, so it'll be interesting to see just what the to sort of take stock of what that looks like. But that's a, another opportunity for volunteers um, to you know get out there to help um, at that phase of the game. Um, and Roger, as far as a hazardous um, materials container, um, when we do green up, we make sure that we put that container in the inside the highway garage for a reason. Um, long ago, when we when I started doing green up, we would leave the the dumpster out at the at Hope Davy Park, and we would it would be a magnet overnight to attract an amazing amount of junk from people. Um, and so you have to be careful to, to put that out. And, and it may be good to have a container that people can bring things to that's in a secure place that could get closed in at night so you're not coming in the next morning and finding televisions and all sorts of crazy stuff that you're then going to have to find a home for so you could end up being like, like this magnet so anyhow that's all from me I suppose thank you thanks for your experience on that yeah Bill um, Roger does the border staff do you have a um, estimate about how many people had more than basement flooding? I mean, do we have a handful or do we have 50? Does anybody know how much first floor flooding happened? Sounds like, from what I've gathered, not too many. Um, really, just maybe the bottom of Randall, but I haven't heard anything. Yeah, Elm Street. Um, Elm Street, there are uh, one or two houses on Elm Street. I heard uh, down at the bottom of uh, Main Street and uh, Union. Um, maybe uh, the a uh, couple of new houses on uh, Armory. Okay, so it sounds like just yeah, it sounds like you know maybe ten. Yeah, and the only reason I asked is because uh, you know they were through it before, but uh, one thing that I learned in my reading was that there were people that you know had carbon floors and, and they thought they had to rip them all out and. Uh, they thought they had to take all their sheetrock off. And, you know, you can cut the sheetrock off a certain amount above the, the high water mark and, you know, save the rest of your wall. So I just wanted to make sure that people weren't um, maybe being too aggressive in what they were trying to do to, to restore their home. So if it's a, a dozen or 10 or whatever, it's a lot better than yeah. Uh, Alyssa. One other best practice thing that folks told me, obviously I was not here firing, but also just to say to everyone to write down what you are doing and why and taking pictures. I last night did a like brain dump note of just like what happened Monday and Tuesday and had already forgotten things. And I'm just a human existing in the world, not managing my own property. So just to anyone who may be listening, just to know if you haven't already to write down what happened, what you did, and remember to take pictures for when you're trying to piece this back together weeks from now. Yeah, we, uh, I don't know if all of us received it, but uh, Keith Cover of uh, Central Vermont uh, uh, 
regional planning, regional planning uh, send out a message about FEMA. Uh, and as you, Alyssa was just saying, uh, your suggestion is take pictures, document everything, keep all your seats because FEMA will be showing up. Um, and uh, I don't know if you have any further information about from about FEMA, Tom. Not right now. Okay. Yeah, I got the email. Right, I got a couple of things. Hmm? Um, yeah. Just from last time, just remembering, and if we will put this in the document, right, that um, is on the website, remembering that uh, FEMA inspectors are often, um, you know, they're trained in FEMA. They're not trained in the region, or they won't have necessarily been here during Irene or whatever. Remember, these are folks who come in from the country. This is just their um, per diem job. Right, the the, the house the house inspectors they are following a checklist that has nothing to do with kind of what actually happened here. So there is a certain amount of that's why the documentation is so important. So um, and all the con congressional staff yesterday, all the field people were trained on interacting with FEMA and how they can support people with FEMA. So you know I think um, we said this the other day like first is mucking out. Then it's FEMA, right? They're two completely different sets of tasks. And we are going to be able to have volunteers to help people deal with FEMA, deal with the organization, deal with the paperwork. But um, don't expect like funny, super um, helpful stuff from the FEMA people. They are not. They're not mean. They're just not like. Um, they come in, they have a pass. Yeah, yeah. But they're not going to help. <laughs> But uh, my experience with them was excellent last, uh, during FEMA, uh, during Irene. As they they yeah. came in, they had those electronic things to measure dimensions in every room. Yeah. They're in and out of there within less than an hour. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, uh, it was very impressive, I thought. So Chris Neville, who was, I don't know if he's still in the meeting, but he did chat. He let us know that no one showed up for the shelter last night, so they're not going to have the shelter Brookside open tonight. Okay, Brookside um, is now closed. Child care is available today, 9 to 3, and they'll make a decision about tomorrow and Friday later this afternoon. Good. Um, so it looks like Lisa has that information. Maybe she'll get that out there. And we have Chris and Sarah's contact information if there are questions. But... Okay. So they're doing child care today, but not necessarily tomorrow. Uh, make a decision later today about tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Oh, and we will reopen the shelter if needed. <laughs> Thank you. No question either. Um, just to follow up on what Liz said, that um, request for logistical assistance is one of the needs folks can submit in the form. I know we already have a number of both folks requesting that assistance and folks offering to help the emotional support cheerleaders, if nothing else, though hopefully we can provide some other trainings on the road. Um, and there is, I know, a FEMA best practices worksheet that we'll work to get in that shared resource document as well. Yeah. All right, Mike. Do we have a supply of um, N N95 masks for volunteers? Yeah, we no. Do. Okay. Like so, or, or I saw somebody in the community offer that recently. That's really critical because especially now with you know with with you get water and mold and stuff like that. That's the you know when everyone could see you need to wash yourself off, but breathing in mold is gonna have very long-term, you know, health effects. Yeah, there may be some masks here in the building left over from COVID that Carla received, the blue medical grade ones, but not in that. Yeah, those are probably not there for mold. Yeah. It's probably better than nothing, but yeah. You know, and I'm not even sure how many are here, but I could, I could, could someone on. put something out on the maybe we could put something off a medical center or something. Yeah, and I put it on the list for the volunteer coordinating too. But an FBF post for family needs will be yeah. definitely necessary. Right. Any further business? We have a motion to adjourn, and then we can start the uh, volunteer meeting. So move. Second. All right, move and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 We'll see you tomorrow at noon.